It's a Friday afternoon. This is the last live stream of IMTS 2022, and we saved the best for last, or at least that's what Brent would want me to say for sure, right, buddy? Absolutely. <laughs> the best for last. That's right. We made it to the Heimer booth. What a week it's been. How incredible. And it's a 20-year anniversary for Brent here in the U.S., so congratulations on that. I believe you got a pretty cool gift as well, didn't you? I did. Thank you, Tony. Yes, the Heimer family was nice enough to give me one of the Panthers that we machined. It's a giant Panther that actually is super cool and it was such a nice thoughtful gift I really appreciated it it was a beautiful gift it was a beautiful party as well the Heimer family is known for the legendary parties but we need to talk about technology guys get excited we have about three minutes per area here because there's so much technology to show you we prompt your questions as well if there's something you want to know more about ask our guys as we run around it's very important to do so with that being said Brent in mills in mills are so important sometimes when people get caught up in all the technology of Heimer this great German brand we forget that you do in mills so let's talk about those absolutely Tony thanks yeah we've uh, started to make end mills and like you said most people know us for our shrinkers balancers presetters and our shrink fit tool holders and other tool holders they don't know us for the cutting tools but these cutting tools are awesome we basically have the ability to drill straight down with our Heimer mill ramp at a 45 degree angle we've got some very aggressive uh, possibilities when it comes to trichotal milling or new programming techniques and of course it comes with the safe lock the anti pull out feature so customers can really be aggressive and machine their parts fast love that anti pull out I tell you what I was also at Smith and Company just recently so shout out to you guys Robert Smith they love your products that testimonial is coming very soon to the MTD channel we're now gonna send this over to Rowan he's got some more amazing technology to share with you Thank you very much, Tony. I'm here with Stefan. We're going to talk about the first piece of technology. It's the Duolog. We've got loads of tech to get through, but Stefan, talk me through the Duolog in as quickly as you can, man. I try the best. Hey, thanks to see you. So, Duolog is Heimer's modular screw-in system, and it's the most rigid system you can find on the market. You can see here from Duolog 10 up to Duolog 32, which is one and a quarter inch. We have a cutting head with three times the length of cutting edge, which is the largest end mill you can find in a modular system on the market so a lot of reach you can do trochoidal operations all to maximize your uh, production plus we have concentricity of five microns in the interface so gives you perfect runout gives you perfect tool life of your cutting tool plus in addition we have a length repeatability of plus minus 10 microns which means if you set it once you can change the head in the machine and you don't need to preset again which of course shortens your setup time saves time and keeps the capacity of your machine as high as possible well Stefan that was fantastic you've got through a lot of points there there's a lot of stuff to do with access accessing areas so that is like when you're programming the part you think oh it's gonna be hard to get there with this color chalk this is when you start reaching for a duo lock system but you don't have to worry about and then we'll talk about um, operator ease of use about swapping out the, the tools a little bit later but about access man how what kind of processes would you need to be doing what kind of, are we talking about big components with with hard to access deep pockets of course, so everybody, if you also look here on the display, everybody's looking for deep reach, for example, in dye and mold industry. Therefore, we have solid carbide extensions, vibration dampening. We have high feed geometries, ball nose geometries. But I tell you, there is also roughing operations with short extension. There is also possibility used dual lock on lace machines because we have perfectly here on the display dual lock collets setup time is very essential in the lathe machine turning machines so it's not only long reach it's also turning machines general machining so you can do basically everything with dual lock and yeah maximize your production you can do everything with dual lock with a run, run out and there's no pull out as well which is something you don't get from a collet chuck and you don't even you can't just use it on a mill you can use it on a lathe as well if you've got any questions for the Heimer team uh, we've not got much time on this but we've got any questions for the Heimer team get those in those are so important now let's just take a little look we were talking about dye mold machine we were talking about finishing roughing look at all the different range of cutting tools you can get with duo lock now do you think people could be reaching for these with uh, maybe not very specialist dye mold finishing do you think people might start reaching for these tools when they're doing general jobs as well standard jobbing shops correct maybe you heard Brent already talked about the Heimer mill so the Heimer mill geometry is also on the duo lock head so all over the place we find the same geometries we have aluminum cutters we have ball nose cutters and let me tell you what, if we don't have the right cutter for you, we have a big assortment of blanks, blank within central internal cooling. And what is pretty new, we don't have it here because it's so new, it's 
um, blanks with white coolant will be in the next uh, day so we'll find it on our website so you can do plenty of different geometries with our blanks we have for Duolog. Well, that's Duolog from Heimer over to Tony's going to talk about another fantastic technology. How many of you love twins? Well, how about digital twins? I'm with my friend Olaf here, and we're going to talk about digital twin technology. Olaf, let's get into it because time is limited, time is money, and we have a busy booth. Yeah, it's very cool with the new technology we have. We're going to generate a digital twin on our presetting devices here directly on the machine, so you don't need to uh, look for all the digital data online or if you even can get it. You can do it right away when you measure the tool and then create the digital twin for your application, for your CAD CAM application, and simulate right away. And it's very easy on the new presetting devices. I just chose a model, what we just scanned here. It's super easy. We have the cut and no cut section is already determined. And so you can simulate right away in a step file. It can be outdated, uh, updated into any CAD CAM system. So that's really cool technology here at the IMTS show. And for everyone who didn't come by, Greetings from here, and uh, next time you better show up. I love it, I love it. And because we're kind of limited on time, is there anything else you'd like to add for the audience, or should we just throw this on over to the next piece of technology? Yeah, I think we should move on to the next piece of technology, and if you want to see how it really works, you need to come by and see it live. What a booth, what an amazing booth. With that being said, keep sending your questions in. We're going to send this over to Rowan now for the next bit. Brilliant, thank you very much, Tony. I'm here with Robert, and we're going to be talking about um, shrink and presetting machines in one. Now, Robert, first of all, what are the problems with heat shrink machines? I've heard of overcooking tools. I've heard of operator safety. How do you address all these issues? Absolutely. So I've, we've seen this over the industry for many, many years. With our automatic systems, like, for example, our, our uh, heat shrink head here, if it comes down automatically, if I'm leaving my hand here, it will stop and go back up so it won't crush my hand. With cooling, we keep the operator's hands away from the hot um, the tool holder and put it straight on the tool and then you don't have to hold it. You're just touching the cold outside. You never have to touch that uh, tool holder until it's cold. Right. So we, we uh, cool on temperature, not on time. So we always know if the holder is cool and it's not a guess. Okay. So How do you got a temperature sensor inside the ring, the induction coil? We've got a temperature sensor inside the cooling channel, oh. so I stick my finger in here and it gets nice, uh, tells me that it's hot or not. Okay, so hopefully it's warming up and then it goes red because your finger is boiling. Oh my God, how hot? You're, you're a smoking hot guy, right? Oh, okay, there we go. I've got a little bit American there. I'm sorry. Um, I guess, okay, so we, I've lost my train of thought here. So what I love is the fact that you guys don't have to touch the tool holder, Absolutely. but can I just ask a little bit about um, gloves? So, so you see guys wearing gloves and some obviously on the shop floor, People have got a machine down. They need to shrink a tool straight away. Yep. It's unfortunately, in my opinion, not as quick as a collet chuck. So you need to make, especially if someone else is using the shrink machine. Sure. So you need to get on the shrink machine, get it done as quick as possible. Absolutely. They won't put gloves on, will they? Right. So yeah. how do you? So how do you deal with that? So what we do, I recommend gloves only to handle the tools because they're sharp. But when we heat up our holders, we do not heat up the tool. It only heats up the holder. So the, again, the operator's hands are always away from the heat source. Okay, fantastic. We've got some questions about the Duolock tools, which is what the practical, what is the practical use uh, tool life of these tools, which I'm afraid, I don't know, Robert, can you answer that question about the Duolock tools? I'm putting you on the spot here. The Duolock tools? Duolock tools. Okay, we'll, we can deal with that a little bit later. We'll get someone else on the stream. Brent's going to answer that question for you. Thank you very much, James, for that comment on YouTube. Um, one last little question here. Yeah. So why would you put together a shrink and a presetter machine? Surely people want a presetter and a shrink so they're separated. They can be used at the same time. Sure. Why do you bring them together? Why should people invest in the single machine? Absolutely. So if you have a multi-turret spindle and you need all of your tools to be set at the exact same height every single solitary time, you want to be able to set your tools measure your tools, and send it to the machine immediately. So there's no moving around back and forth. This will set it within plus or minus 10 microns every single solitary time. Operators will love that. No mucking about. Get those machines as uh, get those machines back up and running as soon as possible. I think production managers would love that as well. Okay, over to Tony for the next fantastic technology. All right, we just had a couple of questions come in from the live stream, one from Stephen and one from James. Those questions are actually kind of together, and it's going to go into what's behind me here. And I grabbed Brent one more time because this was the right way to do it. So James asks, what's the expected tool life of the tools back at the beginning of this stream, in practical terms, of course? And Stephen asks, please, I just joined the stream, and what's up with Heimer machines? So Brent, we got those questions. What's the answer, my friend? Well, it's, it is related, so those it really work 
work together well. So basically, the tool life all depends on the setup and the consistency of the whole assembly of the tool. So it's really appropriate that the next thing we're talking about is our tool room because we talk about balancing, shrinking, presetting. In other words, setting up your tools consistently each and every time. If you do that, you're going to have the best tool life you can possibly get with any cutting tool, whether it be ours or any other cutting tool that you're using. That's absolutely a great answer. Rigidity, rigidity. This is what we're talking about and great tools. Great questions as well. Keep sending those in. We will answer them for you. Now, this might not be the Shaquille that you're used to, Mr. O'Neill, but this is Shaquille <laughs> and we're going to talk you. about some technology here. All right, Shaquille, we have four areas. We got to do this in just a couple of minutes. Very exciting for me. So let's get into it. Yes. Here we see the precision engineer meets digitization. We have connect all the machines with a central database uh, and store connect with the network. Here we had a live view of the, the Heidenheim control. Here we can see which kind of tool is close to the tool lifetime and which lifetime is over. The red ones are close to the end. We choose one, select it, measuring, and now automatic detect in our database. So here we can see all the information for the tool and I write something inside. Hello, MTD, <laughs> save it, and now the tool is saved in the central database. I remove the tool and go to our Heimer identifier to identify what kind of tool it is. I can see all the information in my shop, read via Kotec, scan the holder, and see my tool, the lifetime information, and also a data sheet to build it. Hello, MTD. That is live, no fake, it's a connect of the complete database. Now I can go live to my Heidenheim control and this is also connect with our machine and uh, with the central database. I can scan the tool to load it in the magazine. They load the same tool and all the information is um, displayed here in the control live from our database. Absolutely perfect. And you were able to talk about all of that in just a couple of minutes, Shaquille. Very, very well done. This is the tool room. Is there anything that you, you would like to add? Because we do have an extra 30 seconds or so that you would like to share yeah. with our friends in the audience right now. Yeah. The main advantages of uh, this communication is uh, process safety, 100%, all tools and all the information are stored in one database. And we can watch on this database, maybe on the presetter, in the tool room with our identifier one and we can see live all the information on the Heidenheim control. Really helpful to set up the tools. It really is a one-stop shop to get your automation going within your facility, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it's perfect and really helpful. I agree. And thank you for doing the MTD CNC thing. That was kind of yeah. fun as well. Yeah. Continue to send in those questions, guys, if you have questions. This is a really big, amazing booth here at IMTS 2022. With that being said, we're going to throw this thing back to Rowan and my good buddy Brent again. Happy 20th anniversary, my friends. Thank you very much, Tony. I'm here with Brent again. We're going to be talking about the automation cube. But first of all, this is a there's a lot going on here, Brent. There's a lot happening, and I'm not quite sure. I mean, can you just explain to me? Who, is, this is, I mean, you said this is something. This is like a view, a vision of the future almost. This is not a presetter for a little mom and pop shop, right? What, who, who, who do you think would be looking at a system like this? Well, these are for people who are like setting hundreds and hundreds of tools a day. So what they're going to do is one, they they want to make sure that they are as efficient as pro possible and that they're doing the, the setup as consistently as possible. So let's say they're setting 500 shrink holders a day, 400 shrink holders a day. They're, those are the kind of shops that are going to use this. Now, it doesn't eliminate the normal tool room where people are setting up boring heads or face mill arbors. That's still going to happen, but this could be all automated with the shrink automation cube. Absolutely. So we're talking about really big volumes. Let's keep moving around here, Brent, and have a quick look at the system. We're talking about really large volumes of tooling we're going to be hitting here. Yeah. And when you start moving to high volume, what kind of problems arise and what are you trying to solve by engaging a, a, a robotic system to move tools around? Well, one problem right off the bat is, you know, the skills gap and also the labor shortage. So uh, tool rooms probably can't get people enough, especially third shift or weekend shifts. So what we're going to do is make it as fast and easy as possible with as little human interaction uh, as I mean, needed. You just see this, the, the tool being shrunk right now. So, oh, sorry, continue, yeah, absolutely, no problem. So this is actually shrinking the tool and it's going to remove the tool and then place the new tool in. So this is all happening. Keep in mind though, the tool room, there's still probably someone in there doing something, but in this automation cube, we're shrinking 
and presetting in the same cube. So when it comes out, it's really ready to go to the machine. It's going to be the exact same each and every time. And when we're imagining a machine shop like this, you're thinking, I'm imagining rows of kind of high spec machine tools with maybe a, a, a big sister tooling, um, a tooling pot kind of FMS system. And they've got, like, like we see here, lots of very similar end mills all getting set to the exact same stick out. All, and you're probably machining maybe 5, 10, 15 aluminum castings, all the exact same, all the exact same tooling with the exact same machines. And, but I guess this is the last piece in the puzzle of all of that automation you would get with the FMS. You still got, without this, you still have people going in and setting each of these end mills up straight away. And if you've got 15 end mills to set up and put them in 15 machines, and they've all got to have the same stick out or similar, you might see, you imagine, imagine the, the last one on the shift, they put in a little bit too, too, too far in or a little bit further out, and you get, might, get, might get a smash over on, the, on the, uh, the overnight shift. Absolutely, it's going to definitely eliminate scrap because again, you're going to have the most consistent tooling coming out uh, each and every time. And so, it, yeah, you, you hit it on the head there, Rowan. It, it's really about consistency and reliability, and just no one has time for scrap, no one has time for mistakes. So this is going to help eliminate that. Absolutely. And what other options are? I mean, this is a, a, a kind of a slightly smaller cube. You've got some presets, you've got some presetting, some shrinking, and then putting the pots in and, and making sure you get the right end mills in. But what other options are there for the automation cube? For those people who've got those big shops, and imagine, they, they say, you don't have to imagine it, Rowan. I've got these shops right in front of me. I can look down from my mezzanine. I can see these machines running right now. Well, actually, that's a good point. And that's why we designed it as such. So you can see it's very modular. So we designed it so that you can add things to it or take things away. This does have shrinking and presetting, but we can also put balancing on here. We can make it a larger conveyor belt. We can make it smaller if there's a footprint issue. So it's all about making a simple system that can do very advanced things with this automation cube. Absolutely. I, do, and I love, I've just seen, I don't know if the cameraman can get that, but um, just now they were just t testing the, the height of the end mill in a little laser outside of the tool holder so you know what your stick out's going to be. And I absolutely love that beautiful little, I mean, that's, that's the equivalent of someone just kind of moving the, the, shrink, the little tool up before it shrinks and moving it down a little bit by eye, which is obviously never going to be as consistent as one of these kinds of robots. And it's all about upskilling those people who were doing those slightly more redundant jobs to be doing much more high value jobs, which is, again, it's important to get people working as, on as high value uh, roles as possible for the U.S. manufacturing industry and worldwide. Absolutely. That's exactly, you nailed it on the head, Ron, because People are going to always still be needed, they're always going to be there, and they're going to have to do very important things, but this is redundant, redundant process, but you want it to be accurate and repeatable, and so you might as well let automation take over. Absolutely, automation takeover, but not quite. We've still got loads of people who are running machines day in, day out. We've still got the mom and pop shops that you want to be using your presetters, so you're not going to stop making those anytime soon. So true, so true. I, I should have said probably let automation take over where you can, because you're definitely going to need the skilled people, and they're going to have to be there all the, all the way through. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Brent. Right, I'm going to move over. We're going to go and join Tony now and have some closing words because this has been an absolute joy. Come on, follow me, Brent. This has been an absolute joy to be on the Heimer stand with you today. And also, Tony, I'm sure it's been a joy for you, right? Have, you, have we got any closing words, Brent? I mean, what are we going to do now, man? Yeah, absolutely. I know this is kind of off cue, Brent. You weren't prepared, but I couldn't end this entire week of live streaming without saying congratulations one more time to Brent. I just couldn't. As good as Rowan That's is, we couldn't do it alone. I had to be a part of this. 20 seven live streams this week. Heimer to be the finish. Tool holders, cutting tools, tool presetters, shrink fit, balancing machines. This is Heimer. This is my buddy Brent. Thank you so much. Rowan, you are amazing as well. Thank, thank you. I do feel like I'm so the much. third wheel here. I feel like I'm, I'm on and the sidelines thank line, you so. all so much for watching. We really do appreciate you. MTDCNC.com and we will see you out there.